Hey folks, Dennis Hancock, State Forage Extension Specialist at the University of Georgia, the grass man. So uh, getting a lot of questions these days about black oats and fall forage oats. What's the difference? Should I plant black oats? Should I plant regular oats? I want to do a little cover crop. I might want to do a little bit of grazing. Might want to even make a little bit of baleage. So what should I do? Well, not a whole lot of guidance out there to be honest with you about the differences between black oats and fall oats or forage oats that we normally plant. It's, uh, you know, I think we have to intuit a little bit from other studies, particularly the cover crop world, where they do use quite a few uh, black oats. Um, officially, there really are only a couple of black oat varieties, um, and and there's a lot of good fall forage oat varieties. And our forage oats, there's been a lot of effort gone into making them a lot more grazing tolerant and uh, disease resistant and, and some other issues. So it's really, I think, if you're gonna use them for forage, you really need to be looking at them uh, and looking for the forage oats because that's really gonna give you the better forage production also can give you a lot of biomass for cover crop work uh, and I'm not going to enter into the cover crop world and say that that the forage oats are better than black oats but uh, because there's real advantages to the black oats from a, from a cover crop world in that you've got some more lignin you got more fiber there and that tends to help them stick around a little longer in the in the spring the problem with that is though, the more fiber, the more lignans you have from a forage perspective, kind of limits you a little bit uh, because that lowers your digestibility. So one of the real challenges I think is looking at this from a forage productivity and quality perspective. And particularly if we're gonna be making baleage off of this stuff, uh, you really wanna be looking at these, um, these varieties that are more true forage oats and, and focusing in on those. Plus, we have some fall forage oat varieties now that, that have crown rust resistance. Uh, we've got two, Horizon 720, and the new Legend Oat is excellent at that. And a listing of all of our recommended varieties are available on our website. But I just wanted to bring those two to your attention because they are crown rust resistant. Uh, within about 100 miles of the Gulf of Mexico, or about uh, 50 miles or so from the Atlantic. Uh, if you're in that area, you'd find some advantage there from um, a, an oat variety that does not have any susceptibility to the crown rust disease. That can be a mi big issue for us. Getting a lot of questions also about using oats and getting the uh, barley yellow dwarf virus problems associated with that sometimes. And we definitely get some issues from year to year with barley yellow dwarf. Uh, this is a virus complex that's actually uh, vectored by an aphid, meaning it's spread around by an aphid. Um, the aphid that is of particular interest here is the bird chariot aphid, and that's one that does uh, uh, affect um, some of our small grains, including oats being probably the one that is the most affected by that. Um, Usually, we deal with that in, in grain production by choosing some varieties that are tolerant or less susceptible to it. Unfortunately, in this case, we don't really have any uh, forage oats that are um, less susceptible to barley yellow dwarf. As a consequence, uh, we have to really look at other techniques for, for management. Uh, planting date is a, a major issue and uh, mixtures certainly lessen the the risk and will also lessen the injury uh, that occurs that is for example if you have oats planted with ryegrass ryegrass is not susceptible to it and uh, if the oats do get affected then the ryegrass gets that much greater advantage of coming on stronger afterwards so that's one way of dealing with it too um, there are a few seed treatments that can be used um, uh, they have pretty long grazing restrictions. Uh, there's only a few of them that actually are approved and then allow for grazing subsequent afterwards. Um, I think uh, Gaucho 600 is one that can be used in, for this purpose. 
uh, pretty pricey, but at the end of the day, it could also be uh, a great benefit in protecting that forage, particularly if you're going to make baleage off of this uh, later in the season. So that is something that um, you want to take a close look at. Um, and, and when you're making a decision of whether or not to use oats, that's something that is a factor. Now, if you're using it for cover crops, it really doesn't matter uh, because by the time it, um, um, well, I shouldn't say it doesn't matter at all. It does have a little bit of effect because it doesn't have as much biomass as a result. And biomass is the name of the game when it comes to uh, wheat suppression and things like that. So we do need to, uh, to be careful on that front. So hopefully that uh, gives you a little information to go on and we'll talk to you down the road.